The meeting of the Auburn Housing Authority Board of Commissioners on June 8, 2023 is called to order. This meeting is being recorded. Is there anyone in attendance who is also recording the meeting? No. May I have a roll call? I, Rose Turner, here. I, Sharon, we have the village with Sun Hammer here. We have the village with the Grace here. Oh. We can please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance if you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first thing on the agenda is a discussion and vote to appoint the replacement to the for a replacement to the vacancy of public comment. For public comment. And I want to read a letter uh, under uh, public comment of the Housing Authority meeting of 6-8, which this is. And this is from Todd Karenda. And from, he's a member of the Auburn Society. Okay. Uh, dear Housing, it's dated Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. Dear Housing Authority members, first I want to thank you for your service and I apologize for making this public comment via email. But I work full time and cannot attend a 10 a.m. weekday meeting in person during COVID and now after COVID, in-person attendance at your meetings is difficult, if not impossible, for most Auburn residents since they are during the work. Additionally, even the members of your developments have raised concerns about attending in person due to a lack of accessibility for those who do not have access to a personal vehicle. This is even more difficult to those residents who are physically um, mobility challenged or have compromised immune systems that makes public interactions such as meeting, attending meetings dangerous to their health and well-being. As an interested citizen and former town meeting member from Precinct 3, Packer Drug Village area, and now select board member, I have been able to stay in touch with how the Housing Authority operates and decisions being made by watching the meetings via Auburn Community Television, YouTube, and Facebook pages. Having the opportunity to watch in meetings remotely during or after the uh, fact has been a game changer for many in the community. It is a great way to ensure transparency of housing authority decisions and operations, allowing all interested Auburn residents and others to follow the board without attending the meetings in person. That is why I was shocked and disheartened to see that the Auburn Housing Authority was considering a vote to discontinue this practice at your meeting tomorrow. During a time when almost all boards and commissions around the Commonwealth have been embracing this new technology to improve transparency and encourage public engagement, it seems archaic, reactionary, and counterintuitive to even consider this idea. I strongly urge you to reconsider taking any action that would erode the limited level of access that residents currently have to your board and further reduce the transparency of your operations and decision-making process. The Auburn Housing Authority and its residents are an important member of our community, and as a board, you yield a large amount of power over some of the most vulnerable residents in Auburn. I trust that as the stewards of our public housing system, you will make the right decision and vote against this motion. Warmest regards, Todd.
So this is the Do, uh, and to, how does the board feel about this? When we're discussing that, we're going to go. Mm -hmm. That's for the town. Okay. So we're Nobody else in public comment. Yes. Is there anybody else that has a public comment? You are limited to three minutes. No comment. Now we're on vote number one. This is a discussion and vote to appoint the replacement to the vacant seat. May I have a motion? Please state your name and that you are making the motion to appoint the replacement to the vacant seat. I share the motion to appoint the replacement of the vacant seat. Is there a second? I will turn a second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Before we vote, I will open discussion on the matter. Are there any comments? Any, have there been any letters of interest or um, anyone? No. no. Okay. Then may I have a roll call vote? State your name and whether or not you are voting A or A to uh, vote on the appointment replacement. Sharon Catino? Yes. Rose Turner? Yes. Roberta Briggs? Yes. Yes. Okay. The vote passed. Okay, now we need to. Now we can send a letter. No, you need to pick a person. Well, we can pick a person. Yes, I can nominate a person. All right, do we have any nominations? I share this on the nominating page. Do we have a second? I will turn a second that nomination. Next, to uh, for Wayne Page to be a person that uh, I will go to Briggs. Oh, yes. I want to sign over a abstain from this vote because I believe it's illegal. The Board of Selectmen, first of all, this is just for the nomination. This is not it's going to be a letter of interest. Yes, it's, there should be, there should have been some, uh, you know, outreach to others. And uh, any nomination is going to be, uh, Board of Selectmen have to do a roll call vote with this committee to elect anybody. Where are we? I'm at the state. We are. Okay. 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 I'm at the state. Okay. 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 So, and if we did not receive a letter of um, interest from Wayne, uh, how do we know that Wayne wanted to uh, become a member again if there wasn't some discussion? Because he told Between us. the board members. He did vote. Who did he vote? You. And who did you tell? Everybody except me. Because clearly Sharon made the motion. She seconded it. So there's been some discussion as well. I cannot make a motion, Mr. Chair. I'm just saying there's been some discussion between the seniors. Okay. Which is not what you're saying. I'm going to leave it at that. In a lot of it was assumed because he did run for the seat. And yes. he didn't, and they did not receive votes to get the seat, so. Right, he lost. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So the vote, I vote Pat, Pat, was three, there's three of us voting yes. And one abstention. And one abstention. Okay. Vote number two. Discussion and vote to accept the revised income limits for admission uh, and what's the other one? Abbreviation. 
And that's the part of the They are, um, they are my, they are my, they are my, they are my, a rate for continuing with our occupancy. May I have a motion? Please state your name and that you're making the motion to accept the revised income limits for admission and I still want to block it. It's just a little bit. Yep, they're my, 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 and the fair market rates for continued occupancy. I'm Rose Turner to make a motion to revise income limits for admission and FMRs for continued occupancy. May I have a second? State your name and that and that you second the motion. I share it with you. Before we vote, I'll open the uh, Open it up for discussion. May I have a roll call vote? I Rose Turner here. Vice Chair here. Please say it will be Roberta Gracie. Now, the fair market rents are something that HUD establishes every two years, and the state uses the same level. So this is something that we've been using for years. And that determines what income the residents pay or what is acceptable to be allowed in to housing. So it's, it's a standard thing. This is the first time they've ever asked the board to vote to approve, you know, accept them. But it's something that we've always used. So the, they just want the board to vote. Any discussion? Oh, okay. So it's a creative conflict with the rights. Yeah. But just for some reason, this is the first time they've ever asked the board to vote yeah. to accept these things. But it is something that HUD publishes every two years. And the state adopts what HUD puts out, but now they want to vote on it. Okay, may I have? Does everybody understand? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we have the vote, right? Okay. May I have a roll call vote? Please state your name and whether you are voting A or A. Sharon Patino. Yeah. Rose Turner. Yay. Yeah. Wendy Steinberger. Yes. Roberta Briggs. Yes. We move on to vote number four. Discussion and vote to approve the May check register. We're going to table that to the next meeting. All right. Did we miss? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We can go back. Before I turn it back. About the televising the board meeting. Oh, yes. Yes. It's vote number three. A voting and uh, discussion and vote to discontinue televising the Auburn Housing Authority meetings. And we did discuss this. And uh, well, we didn't vote on this. When was it discussed? That was just a yeah. uh, comment made by the board. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So, may I have a motion? 
to uh, state your name and that you're making a motion to discontinue televising of Auburn Housing Authority Board meetings. By Sharon McCann. Would like to make a motion to discontinue televising of an authority board meetings. Is there a second? I rose turn a second to discontinue televising of an housing authority board meeting. Before we vote, uh, I will open the discussion on this matter. Is there any further discussion on it? We have one comment in writing, which I read. I'd like to know where this, this is coming from who, who requested this item on the agenda. The agenda is made up by, uh, by me and... Uh, the reason I ask is because I'm just wondering what the thinking is behind it. Uh, the meetings are held during the day, 10 o'clock in the morning, and a lot of people can attend. <coughs> and the only way that they can and view them at their leisure is via YouTube or Facebook. And now we want to stop that from happening as well. So I'm just wondering, what is the thinking behind this and where is it coming from? Has been anybody telling me? Yes. Lauren, you're up. Um, I had the opportunity to call um, other local housing authorities and I called 15 of them. Of the 15 I called, I got one yes. One local housing authority televised the meeting. 11 did not, and three, I got no answer. They didn't answer the phone. So based on that information, that makes it the right move for us. And we, we talk about you know, confidence in public housing, transparency, uh, and making sure that uh, the residents of our public housing are most important, and that they have all the information that they need that they need, and then we're going to vote to stop televising meetings. We want to be consistent with, with what uh, that's, the that's a problem. No, that's a problem. Isn't. If we learned that yeah. the reason we were being televised was because of retaliation against one of the board members, yes. and that's why we were being one at a time. Yeah. And you, you, you have said mm -hmm. that you and she is trying to explain it to you. Will you please allow her to do that? Thank you. That the reason we were televised was done out of retaliation against one of our board members. So we called around to see who else was being televised, and we found that the majority of the boards that we, the majority of the towns that we called were not being televised. So at this time, I made the recommendation that we not. And after the meeting that happened on May 23rd, and the bullying and the mistruths, it just, at this time, it does not seem like the right thing to do, in my opinion. You know about the people we serve, the residents? What about that? Shouldn't they be able to watch and see what goes on in, in, in the interest of transparency and confidence in public housing? And if what was happening at the board meetings was in the interest of that, then I think it would be a different situation. But it just seems to be um, a mechanism, mechanism that was put in place to promote certain things and not to benefit the housing authority. Or the residents. Or the residents. Well, I, I, I would say that I disagree because the residents mm -hmm. need to know what is happening. And, and again, transparency and confidence in the work that we're doing on their behalf. Does anyone else have any comment? How do you feel about you, your residents? How do you feel about it? I mean, we had a board member resign because of that meeting, because of the way because that... Because of the comment. Correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
that was, uh, to me, that was an attack. Mm -hmm. on that person. It was a disgusting yes, display. It was, disgusting. Mm -hmm. it was a disgusting mm -hmm. display. Yes, it was. Yeah. And I think at this time, but at this, I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Wendy, I honestly think at this time, until we can regroup and get our act together, get our board together with a fifth person, I mean, this is something we can, we can address going down the road because it's in place but I just in my opinion I the bullying the harassment there's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes we don't need to be must-see TV and it's not fair to the other board members to be bullied and harassed and mistreated by anyone we were sandbagged at that meeting mm -hmm. Right. And it was a disgrace. And I don't want that going out as a representation yes. of this board. That's not fair. It's not fair to the board members. However, I will say that it was not control either. There was very little mm -hmm. control about how that unfolded. Mm -hmm. That's true. Right. That true. And that falls on the person that's chairing the meeting. Mm -hmm. okay? That's true. And, so, and me. It was allowed to go on when it should have been stopped. Right. Right. But that's where the so sand the chances of that happening again if somebody you know takes control of the meeting and you know does not allow that to go on. Once they said that they any kind of a grievance <coughs> and it's smoking, doing it stops right there. That's when it should have been stopped. And it should have been said, I'm sorry, that's a grievance, you need to file that with the office. That would have ended it but it was allowed to go on. And I think a lot of that was because it was unexpected Yes. and we were not prepared. The reason. We were not prepared. And that's why I think at this time, it's best to get our act together before we that's go public. Yes. I mean, anybody's certainly welcome to come to the board mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. but Yes, because you don't want them coming to individual board members to aid their, their problems. Right, and they shouldn't be. Because that then starts your ability to do your job. Mm -hmm. But they and need to be able to come to a meeting as long as the content is controlled. But we're not at that point right now. And the fact that it isn't, a, it isn't something we're required to do, I think we need to step back and get our act together let the residents know clearly what the process is, what actually gets brought to the board meeting, so they understand that the tenant complaints need to go to the office to give us a chance to address them. They don't need to be going to individual board me members. They don't need to be telling individual board members that they're not doing their job mm -hmm. and exactly. harassing them right. and bullying them. That's unhealthy, I agree with that. but, I agree that's, with that. but that's what's going on. Well, we need to make the residents aware that there is a grievance process if they're not happy yeah. with what we're doing, if we're not following through. Yeah, for every action, action, there's an opposite reaction. I understand that. Right? Mm -hmm. Of course I do. I said my piece. And I, I've got to be honest with you. People are actually threatening me. Well, if you don't, if you don't do this, I'm calling Wendy. I'm calling Wendy. And I told them, I will not speak with you. And if you have a problem, you show up in a meeting. And they that's don't show my up. No, no, no. They don't show up at Yes, they have every right to come to a meeting. They, but but then, if they have a problem, they should be coming to the yes, office. Yes, they have agreements. Yes. Any kind of problem. We have a, we have a, a policy for that, and it should be put in writing and given to Laurie in the office. But you also have a public comment section. So they are able, as long as it's, like we said, as soon as it agreed it's, that's when it stopped. And you let them know that they have to put it in writing and that you will not, not hear anything further from them unless it's not agreed. It's, yes, but the other part of that was, and it was my fault, because I made the determination that I let one person speak. Therefore, I had to let everyone that wanted to speak speak, and that's, that's what I'm this for, correct? Yes, but I not go on yeah. and on, in for now. Right, right. Which that's what I'm saying. 
Yes, but once you let one person speak and they speak their mind, then you have to let the others do the same thing. But it wasn't controlled. It wasn't. It was not controlled. No, it wasn't. And as soon, like I said, as soon as she said, oh, she's complaining about smoking, I'm sorry, that's a grievance. Go to the office, put it in writing. That's when it gets stopped. So, so now we don't want public comment. We don't want to be televised. We didn't say we don't want to do a public we comment. We don't have public comment. It's just so. What are we? What are we trying to accomplish here? We're trying to shut it down. Get our act together. I'm not saying that this is going to go on indefinitely. You know, I it's how the boy feels, but the bullying, the harassment, the mistreatment, the lies. It, it this goes out and then once it's there it never goes away we didn't even have an opportunity to rebut any of it but that's not the role in that meeting right it's not that's the whole thing is we never should have answered you have a right to say your piece and we don't have to address it at the meeting mm -hmm. then you go back you regroup you figure out you know what it is you need to do moving forward right it doesn't get addressed at the meeting at least that's never been my experience in a public meeting. We, we do answer comments if they're, they're, they're short, something that you just need a couple of minutes to speak. Mm -hmm. But to go on infinito, no, that's not allowed. Exactly. Okay, anybody else have anything else to say? We voted on this, right? No, you have a copper vote on what? Okay. So, now we can vote. <clears throat> May I have a motion to discontinue televising of the Ormond Housing Authority meetings at this time? I share a concern. Make a motion to discontinue the televising at this time of the Ormond Housing Board meetings. I, Rose Turner. Make a motion to discontinue televising the Auburn Housing Association. Sure. Okay. Second. Second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? No. So it passes. Check the right? check the check the check. Go back to the next meeting. Okay. Just pointing needs to understand what we mean. Yes. What we mean by check register. She doesn't know. She doesn't know that. Right. And there will still be a lot of training coming up to my I understand. I'm waiting for. Uh, I I kind of do understand the check register. I have a small business. So okay. I'm pretty. pretty uh, just don't, I mean, it's a lot of things getting thrown at you all at once, and I just want to make sure, and it's good, it actually is good for them too, to make sure they understand what it is they're actually voting for and sign. Yep. Yeah. Uh, discussion and vote to do the community room calls. Mm -hmm. May I have a motion? Please state your name and that you're making a motion to review the community room policy. I'm Rose Turner. Motion review community room policy. May I have a second? I share with you now. Second that motion. And before we vote, I'll open it up for discussion on this matter. And I think we talked at the last meeting. Um, about you know, the search safe certification permits for private parties, etc. And then we also discussed talking about not allowing people to cook because that's what serves sometimes and serves people, but they can bring items that were cooked at some other place mm -hmm. that has that kind of oversight. And that the tenant would be responsible for if of course people get clean, but that it needs to be room swept clean. Um, and if anything is found in the community room after such a gathering, that it will be thrown away, no exceptions, but that they should make sure it's a part of the 
that would be able to know they're picking or somebody who's more coffee creamer or eat the potato chips. You left it there, it, it's, it's gone. Um, also, in it, along with that, is unlocking the bathrooms um, so that people aren't forced to go outside the building, especially, you know, today it's raining. You know, a couple months ago, it was snowing. Um, in inclement weather, they have to go outside and talk about safety and forcing people to go outside and it, it just opens it up for other things. But it doesn't enclose, you know, I mean, it's not like right. going out in the corner yeah. zone. But to not force them to have to go around um, to do it. I did uh, take a stab at a draft. Um, I'm going to just be able to leave you here. Okay, before, that just included that word. Okay, that's all. before we get to this, yep. Before we get to this point, yep. Maureen, you're up. Whether or not um, what did you the 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 same people, um, the, the same fifteen local housing authorities that I called regarding whether their community rooms were open, um, ten of them answered yes, they were open, and three did not answer the phone at all and two are not open at all. Can I and uh, clarification on when you say they're not open? Yes, is Lester had a fire, so that is closed. Okay. And Spencer has, um, they've given that community room for a time to the people who do Meals on Wheels. So those two are not open to the tenants. Okay, but the other ones are? Yes, okay. 10 are. Okay. So we know, then we asked them to send us... If they were... They oh. have, yeah, but they have the rules and regulations. Perfect. So we have others to go by. That's perfect. And, and this is the thing. We, we, we didn't get copies of everyone. Some of them don't have any policy for the... But we figured that it's in the best interest of the residents to have the community rooms open. We're concerned about liability if, as far as things being left there, someone else eats it, gets sick, whatever. But we figured if we looked at what these other housing authorities have in writing, we just want to be consistent with what everybody else is doing. So we are going to be open. We know that. To the extent of being open, I mean, for somebody to have a birthday party in the community room, that makes perfect sense. There's no room for them to have any kind of party in right. their apartment. Exactly. We need to have control of the number of people that attend. I mean, we can't have, if we have a limit, occupancy limit in that room. We need to be able to control the use of alcoholic beverages. We don't allow that. We have to control the smoking. We don't allow smoking. You know, that's forbidden everywhere. Right. So there's certain things that we have to put in place in order to protect the residents and yes. the housing fire. So we think, well, well, call around, see what everybody else is doing. Then we can compare what they're doing to what we want done. So that is, is an agenda item. How come those weren't included in our package? We can still. We've been still, this was. This is just an ongoing kind of a thing. We just are getting these in. Mm -hmm. This was this was like this week. So we can turn around and photocopy what we have and then go back and look, photocopy a draft. And at our next meeting, after we can bring it back up on the agenda and vote. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned smoking and alcoholic beverages, and that's already part of our community room policy. Right, our existing policy. Existing policy, correct. Mm -hmm. So how is that different than what you just mentioned? Smoking because we're not, we're not mentioning um, who can actually use the community room, who can request use of the community room. I'm sorry, but I thought at some point that the community room was open and there were already established policies, and I see that there is an application. And right. I understand that COVID closed it down, mm -hmm. and now COVID restrictions have been, and why can't the community room be opened back up to but, but what the standards that were previously in place? What hours of the community, what hours is it going to be open? 
what was the established norm prior to COVID? They have key they could use it during the day, but I mean, we had it left open. There were people sleeping in the community room that did not belong here because the residents didn't lock it up, but they left it unopened so that a family member could sleep. If we had some problems in the community mm -hmm. room. But he also had established guidelines. That's great. Right? Yes. Application and all of that. Number of individuals expected to attend. How many? Um, we probably should know that no more than X amount of people are allowed in the building. That kind of thing. Well, that, that was for an event. That was. This was for an event. This is mm -hmm. wasn't right. for people that wanted to play cards during the day. Right. There was never an issue with any of other than cleaning up after themselves. There was never an issue with people wanting to play cards, just wanting together to have a cup, a cup of coffee. Then it, it morphed into it, then it morphed into <coughs> feces on the walls in the restroom, and that's why the restrooms were locked mm -hmm. because we couldn't control who was. Is there somebody that's on site at the time during the day? What do you mean on site? Like a staff person? Yeah, a maintenance or anybody up there? Maintenance or on staff too, but not to patrol the community room. Right, but help me to understand, um, is, is it is secure at the end of the day? Or is it yes, staff under secure at the end of the day? Before COVID, it was. Mm -hmm. They were locking it up, but the residents <coughs> have a key. So a lot of the problems, if not all of the problems that we were having were by residents. Unlocking it so family members right. could, I, I could crash there. Residents, feces in the bathrooms, mm -hmm. on walls. Mm -hmm. Really? Things have happened. Things happen. You know, not the not <laughs> All right, so somebody purposely yeah. smeared feces all over the place. There was abuse. Yeah. Residents were complaining that things were stolen. They had a bag of chips. They're gone. Again. You know, that all becomes part of the policy. Mm -hmm. um, but these, you know, you figure COVID just ended. This has been going on for three years. So this policy, we haven't addressed this policy since before COVID. So it, we need to, COVID locked us down. Mm -hmm. Now we're opening up. So we need to address the policies, policies to address the complaints and problems that we've had establish hours that we want it open. We have a policy in place for events. We've had that all along. Mm -hmm. But we weren't open for any kind of events. I mean, we've had people that wanted to have their Thanksgiving dinner okay. in the community room. So, so going forward, we need to come up with very clear policies on how our residents can be best served by the community room. That's what it's there for. Okay. And how, how will we proceed going forward then? I think we should look at what other people have and compare it to what we think and come up with a really good policy and that's what we're going to do going forward okay and so will there be a subcommittee that's developed for that no i think we can do it ourselves. Work on it ourselves i think we can work on it ourselves okay so we'll be provided with copies from all of the other um, and we can even call the housing authorities there's other housing authorities that we can contact mm -hmm. that i know will have very good policies how many of these are we seeking to yeah, we're going to get a look at all 11, 10 or 11, yeah. or would, would five be sufficient? If if what we have here out of the five is what the board wants, and that's enough information, then that should be sufficient. If you don't feel that you have enough information, we can certainly call more. You know, I mean, I tend to look online and get policies from different places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like you said, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Well, and some of the bigger housing authorities have attorneys on their staff. So we, I tend to go with them because legally the issues have already been handled. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As far as liability, we don't want anybody to get hurt. We're not going to risk anybody, any of our residents or any guests getting hurt. So I mean, if there's things not reinventing the wheel. If there's things that we can do by looking through these, I mean, these may not be good for us. They may work for them, but they don't work for us. So I think if we copy what you wrote, copy these, give it to the board, but I mean, it's something. It was only based on, uh, the only thing I included was based on a discussion of bringing mm -hmm. in 
I didn't say we're already made. Mm -hmm. That was it. But these other policies, I mean, look at us as a paragraph. Yeah. But some of these others are kind of lengthy. You know what I mean? So they went more into it. And if there's some ideas here that we can use before we before we go ahead, then why not do that? Mm -hmm. And do one good policy that addresses all the issues mm -hmm. that we've had in the past, and it gives us the residents get, have a good opportunity to use the space, but to avoid the abuse. Absolutely. Because we have no control over what these people do. So the one thing I'd like to ask them is, can we set a deadline as to uh, when we'd like to um, complete this uh, task and not let it go on for months and months and months? Can we set, setting a, set a deadline, deadline is really tight on the office depending on what they have to do. But. We can well, copy these. I thought, these we, were and all gonna I thought we were all going to review these mm -hmm. and try to pull best practices and comment. Now, how about no. the next board meeting? Would that be reasonable? They have those copies? No, but you'll get the copies today. Okay. Get the copies to you today. Mm -hmm. Have everybody have a chance to take notes on what you like, what you like, okay. going forward. Yeah. We have Wendy's, we have other housing authorities that submitted these to us. and. They're all kind of similar to us. I think there are five or six there. In size. They might have better ideas. Sure. We can add them. Terrific. And, and if you feel that we can put together a policy amongst ourselves addressing what gets unlocked, who has access, because when you, when you open up certain things, I mean, the restrooms are open to the residents. That part of it, I think it's just the laundry room. You can't go from the laundry room right to the bathroom. To the bathroom. But by opening that up, we open the door. Yes. The home health care workers are going to have access to the community room and bathrooms. Right. They're doing laundry, right? They're doing laundry. They sit and play games on their phone or something in the community room on the laundry store. That's a no-no. They they're not they, they're not supposed to be there unattended. No. It's not their community room. That's the problem. So then, a lot of these policy. things you know, have to go for state and federal regs. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and see, this is the thing. It's like we're we're not there to provide access to the home health care workers. We don't even know who they are. We could, you know, we don't right. know. Right. We don't know that they're not making a duplicate key for their own use. We don't know. We don't even have the right to ask who they are. Well, the keys that are given out, they there are keys that can say right on and do not duplicate. Is that the case? That is, that is yeah, the case, right. but that doesn't mean they're not being duplicated. Well, I'm just saying that yes, if they are duplicated on a reputable But the resident um, is given place is not going to duplicate those keys. These home care workers or their family members or whatever, and we have a policy in place that they can't be doing laundry. It's only for the resident. They're doing laundry for the resident, correct? They could be. They could be doing their own. We've had family members doing their laundry in our laundry room yeah. because it's cheaper than well, using. Yeah, yeah, Do you hear what I mean? There's, there's a lot of this stuff that goes on. There's absolutely. been abuse. So we're trying to eliminate the amount of abuse. And then you've got family members doing laundry. They're saying they're doing it for their parent. And the residents are saying, Kick, close this bag. And so obviously they're not doing their parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's this size. Mm -hmm. So there's abuse. And we charge like, what is it, dollar twenty-five? Yeah. For a wash and a dry. It, that's a lot cheaper than going to a laundry room. Absolutely. So the residents are saying, well, okay, we can't do our laundry because we're given we're being you know we're we're giving these people that can't do their own priority over us and we're seeing that they're washing their grandchildren's clothes. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Well what are, what's this about? They're not supposed to be doing that. Why aren't they doing it? They're, they're abusing the laundry room policy, which we have a policy for everything that might not be the best. Mm -hmm. But we had something in place. But it's it's the level of abuse that happens. And we don't so have- So there's no monitoring or anything that goes on? No. None. None. So is it also my understanding that you have uh, unfulfilled positions that you have funding for that haven't been filled? And could it be somebody that's stationed up there that's doing something that's keeping an eye on things, or what? I I, I hear a lot of a lot of problems. But can we work on? Let's find the best way to solve these problems. 
rather than being punitive and retaliatory based on the bad actions of one or two or three individuals that live in the housing. So you're thinking about having somebody to monitor? I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe they're up there doing work. Well, maybe there's some work, that, busy work that they could be doing while they're monitoring the uh, identity room. You know, this is independent living, too. It's independent. It is. I understand that. Yes. We're not, not, we're not police. No. But that's what I'm saying. We've, there's got to be a balance between, yes, the few bad apples that do things that, and the rest of the community. There's always going to be a few bad apples. But generally, do you find that the population is pretty good and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, generally? Generally? I'm not going to guess. Like I said, we're not a police department. No, we are not a police that's why I'm saying do that. Right. Well, we but in the next breath, we're being told that we, that we have to shut it down in order to make people comply with, with the rules. Sometimes you don't. And that's punitive. It's like the laundry room. Everybody rooms. except the few bad actors. But like the laundry room mm -hmm. use. The residents all have a key to the laundry rooms. Mm -hmm. There's two, one in the front and one in the back. I'm driving through in the middle of the night, and like the lights are on in the laundry room, and the machines are going. And I'm like, well, okay, who's doing laundry in the middle of the night? Well, I confronted one man, and he was living illegally with another resident, and he's doing his wash. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you have no business being here. Mm -hmm. And he told me I have no business telling him what he's going to do. <laughs> That's what I say, yes. You know, we, we, we are bad actors. And this, is, and this is the thing. It creates a potential dangerous situation for the mm -hmm. residents because they shouldn't be arguing with anybody number one, right. and they shouldn't be confronting anybody who could hurt them. Mm -hmm. So so do you see that there's a, a, any kind of a solution for this besides locking everything down tight and, and stopping access to the residents? Well, a lot of it is the, the residents have the right to have access. It's their family members, it's whoever, if they take, leave the door to the laundry room open, yeah, we're going around. I feel like we're going around the circles here. We are. Uh, but that's you know, a lot of bad about. actors. Mm -hmm. we, we all, um, generally, the population does a bad charter and does what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Laurie also is here in the middle of the night at times just to check on things and make sure mm -hmm. that we get like that the laws are being rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about, the the best, what about video surveillance and things like that? Has that been investigated? The problem with the video is you actually have to monitor it. But there are companies that do that. But then we'd be hiring a company to do that. But that's what they, that's but what they do. We don't have the money to do all mm -hmm. of these things that we would love mm -hmm. to do. On the federal side, yes. On the state side, mm -hmm. no. Okay. So that's that something we can look at budget-wise? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. so it's like... We are not, I don't know that we're always proactive. We tend to be reactive on some things because the minute something happens, we have to do something. Address. So it is, is it always the best solution? No. But in the meantime, you gotta, you gotta see that the residents have the access. It's the abuse of that access is the problem to the community room right. and the laundry room. Right. They do have a key to open the doors. Who they give the key to, or if they leave the door open, is where the problems come in. We have a problem with stealing toilet paper and paper towels. I bring them over there, and two days they're gone. Mm -hmm. And we, the maintenance, puts the paper towels yeah. there, the toilet paper there, to the point where at one point they were writing a magic marker, property of AHA, so that when there was one resident we suspected of stealing them, and sure enough, mm -hmm. they went into her apartment, and there it was. <laughs> Everything we put in, this oh, resident was taken out, and maintenance found it in her apartment. She denied it. And then they're showing her inside, here you go. Mm -hmm. We're not picking on you. You're, yeah. taking, you're taking our product yeah. so that it's not mm -hmm. there for when somebody else goes to use it. They're in the bathroom thinking they're going to have toilet paper. And they're not thinking they've got to check before they right. go. Right, right. So it's a problem. Nothing worse. 
Yeah, then they were in there, and who are they going to tell? There's no paper. It's not like there's a family member that you can say, uh, can you give me a roll? There's nobody there. So you suggested at the next meeting, uh, we'll get copies of these today, and the next meeting we can be back with uh, what we think we'd like and some and what we don't like and others. And if you look, there's probably a laundry room use policy in your book, too, mm -hmm. and that can be that can be, that can be in coordination. In coordination. Yeah. Yeah. But everything we've done, Wendy, is meant for a reason. Sure. I understand that. But at least um, <laughs> keep the community room locked down so we can build this down. Mm -hmm. But what about people signing up for events? They can do that. They can do that. As of today. They As of today, that. they can sign up for events. But I in the ultimate approval on those events. I understand that. Mm -hmm. As you should. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I noticed on that application is maybe we know down there how many people are allowed in the building so that mm -hmm. there's no it's very clear mm -hmm. about uh, how many people have been having attendance at this because this is the time of year for graduations mm -hmm. and all kinds of celebrations that people want to happen and we're already in to what the second week of june now and these people need access so they can enjoy these milestones with their families and so it's not just it's not just that wendy the housing authority put on events Oh, I understand that's that. why those days are gone right now, right? With, with COVID, that not, not necessarily, because as of May, May 11, mm -hmm. COVID's mm -hmm. over. COVID is over. But we've had um, nursing home, like assisted living places, have asked if they could put on a program. Oh, right. We've right. done that in yeah. the past, yeah. and that's helpful. They bring refreshments. Right. It's a yeah. and anybody that's going to come and bring refreshments, that's a win for us. Yeah. Because the Absolutely. residents get to come, socialize. This is what we've always done in the past. We've had events here. That's why I went for Surf Safe. Yeah. I was, we were preparing parties. I always had a holiday party. We've had them here. We've had them at the Elks. These people need something to do. And anything we can do for them, this, like this. These are things we've done in the past. We have a relationship with the schools mm -hmm. where we bring residents down to have time with the kids in the after school program. This is stuff that we've always done in the past. I sponsored bus trips. We went to the Colonial Club. We've been to the Spencer Country Inn. Wright's Chicken Farm. Wright's Chicken Farm. <laughs> the Housing Authority would rent the bus. Mm -hmm. The residents <coughs> would have to pay for their own meal. Mm -hmm. And anybody that could go, I mean, I took bus trips with these people. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you, you just have to, it's, we've got to find things for them to do. But we've got to do it in a way that it doesn't come back to hurt us. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? The state told us, uh, in no uncertain terms, there's no money in our budget for parties. I've been having parties all along. I've always had a holiday party. We send cards for all, everything. Mm -hmm. Anytime we have, any chance I get to send them a card, I do. Because most of their friends are gone. Nobody bothers to send a card anymore. Mm -hmm. But you can ask anybody. They get cards mm -hmm. from us for all the events, mm -hmm. every holiday. Mm -hmm. Whether they practice it or not, they get a card. They usually get candy. Mm -hmm. Although there's one that they've told us they can't get candy because she's a serious diabetic. But they all get something. Mm -hmm. I am always buying candy. I have it out in bowls so that they have access to that because then they don't have to buy a candy. They just have to come to the housing authority and if they want a version of Kiss, guess what? It's here. Yeah. And that's terrific. That's all great. Um, and like I said, I'm only concerned about them being able to have events. And uh, do we need to vote on that? That we open it for events again now that COVID has been lifted? Or is that just going to happen? And let everybody know, but of course, is there going to be a notice sent up? Because now we're not going to be televising this stuff anymore. So how are yes. people going to know? Yes, we're going to send out notices okay. for everything. Would you, post it. In, would you include it in our package? Absolutely. Okay, that's there's, no, there's no okay. issue with that. The yeah. bottom line is, I, myself, want them to have access to those community rooms. My mother participates in that. They're doing puzzles in the back community room. And they knit together every day. day. They they and a lot of the issue was because the senior center was closed, where are they going to go? Mm -hmm. The senior center provides a number of yes. events yes. for them to be. They are a wonderful resource for our residents, especially at Pack Chuck. 
They're a wonderful re resource, mm -hmm. but because they got closed in February because of that flood, they've been limited as to what they can do. Of course, the weather was bad. Now the weather's starting to get better. They're starting to go. They're doing puzzles in the back, and they're playing cards. And this is what we want. They need to be able to socialize. They can't do it in their apartments because the apartments are too small. I mean, you can have maybe one or two people, and then that's it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, so that's these, exactly why I, I brought it up. But this is the thing, but yeah. we're just recovering from COVID. Yes. Yeah. So they just need to give us time to get this squared away. We can fix the policies. There's no reason why we can send out a notice that they can submit a request to, for use. There's a group that plays cards a couple times a week, so they're going to have to reserve that space so that we don't allow someone else to come in and have a birthday party in the middle of their playing of the cards. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you know what I mean? So there's some things that we need to make clear to the residents, but it's there. But as far as using the stove and the kitchen, we don't have a permit for this right now. We don't have a permit and permit for what? Use of the kitchen. Yeah. Well, we, we've talked about that. Serve yeah. safe. No, 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 but in the order serve safe. The serve safe is something different. Okay. Right? The serve safe is saying that if I were to hold an event, that I'm responsible. That's where the serve safe came in, was me. I'm not going to monitor somebody else's event. So is it a town permit for the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then someone will be contacting. Or what about down in Florida? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. But we shut that down because we weren't using the kitchens, and I'm not going to authorize anybody else to use the kitchens either because we're not there to monitor what's going on. But you know how you were talking about Shaw's and the coffee cakes and all that? There's no reason why none of that can be done. There's no way. That's what I would so say. That's what I would do. But I mean, as long as they're not preparing or warming, warming up, I mean, other than a microwave, and even that, we've had food for our microwaves and. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's an issue. Anything that doesn't need to be warmed up, they're good to go. They're bringing in their own beverage as long as it isn't alcoholic. I mean, if they're bringing a box of Joe, they're good to go. Hey, that's a good tagline. Box of Joe, you're good to go. Well, see? Oh, such a good one. Especially when I had that slide. Well, you know what? We're, no, we're, we're trying to deny them no. anything. Like my mother, no one is saying that you are. But it's like we're just coming out of COVID, and May this May eleventh. And we're booking we're closing in on a month now, and if you're, you know, I'm just asking you to get this stuff. And I know, so people I know, can enjoy the families, mm -hmm. have a piece of cake, mm -hmm. celebrate these milestone events that are happening. Like I said, especially this time of year, and bring stuff from wherever they buy. Yeah. Box of yeah. Joe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're, they're all set. But I mean, as far as giving them access to our our kitchen and stove, that's not a good idea. And that's not, not a good idea. Give them to warm something up. We don't know how long it might have been sitting on their counter at home. And that's where serve safe comes in. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, the, the, the deal with how long things are being left out is an issue before you go and serve it to somebody. Do you know what I mean? So you got potato salad. Mm. Well, okay, how long was it on the kitchen counter before they brought it? It was not made at the location. It was brought from somewhere else. Mm. The onus is on wherever it was brought from, not on the kitchen at the bar. So that's the bottom line. And that's the thing. We have right. no idea how right. long. It's really it's up to them. We want to take a chance and eat it, we take the chance and eat it. But it's, we're not going to be liable for anybody liable gets sick. Absolutely not. All right, so we're going to copy what we have here. And if you think it's OK, if there's things you like about it, you're going to highlight them. We have highlighters. No, we have a million of them. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at Wendy's is going to be included in this. OK, so that's going to be, you get that today, our next meeting, this is going to be on the agenda, and you can come up with the ideas that you like as a group. We don't need a subcommittee. We've got enough. We've got two residents here. <coughs> Roberta's been on the board of health. She's a nurse. Yep. I'm a, a retired nurse. I 
what my right. race yeah, is. Yeah, we talked about that. And she yeah. isn't. She is still a nurse. Yeah. She's been on the board of health. Been a nurse. Nurse. <laughs> she's been on the board of health. She's been on the board of health and go up here. Yeah. So we can come up with a good policy, be in compliance with everything, compare what other people are doing compared to what we're doing. Okay. And once we come up with a really good policy, we're going to send it to everybody. Great. And then we're going to unlock those doors so that the things that happen are really locked. Unlock what doors? If they're locked, the residents can, should be able to do it. But what about the home care? Home? They, I don't know See, about home care. I'm strictly talking about residents. So that they can use the back and tell them how to do it. I think the mm -hmm. residents have access because they, if they have access to the community room, right. They should have access to the bathrooms. Is that your? Okay. Yeah. That's been your experience too. I hate go over there. But if the laundry, if the bathrooms are locked, we can unlock the bathrooms. Okay. But it's for the residents' use, not for the home care workers' use. Okay. That's the issue that didn't get mentioned. And the abuse. The first time we see somebody sleeping in there, I come through in the middle of the night then we're going to be addressing that one. And I think, again, when we talk about reaching out to other um, mm -hmm. housing authorities, it would be a good idea to ask that question. How are you handling it? Mm -hmm. you, you said the community rooms are open, but did Maureen, were you able to gather any other information from them when you talked with them? I certainly will. Anything you folks want, I'll ask. Okay. okay. And they're, they're starting to love getting calls from Maureen. <laughs> uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, ask them how they handle these rogue, uh, you know, issues, and are they having these same types of issues? And like we are, uh, we're experiencing it, and you know, right. others are as well. And how are they handling it? I certainly will. That'd be great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, we're experiencing AI too. In a lot of these, it's even worse. It's even worse. But if we can come up with good policies, then they've asked me for years what policies we have, and we've always shipped them out. Mm -hmm. So that's why for us to be calling them, they're understanding. These people I know, they know that we're having an issue. And what they have, and we'll come up with something good, and then we'll pass it along. Whether they use it or not, it's up to them. I'm sure they have issues. Mm -hmm. and, yes, and, and they are also saying, and how are they here? Yeah. Right, how are they handling mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it's legal, then we have the best right processes. processes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but for the last three years, it's been kind of. Hmm? So when we're in bed, it's going to be in the bed. All right, so we. No, okay, so we're going to. Everybody's going to get these. You're going to highlight. You need a highlighter. We'll give you a highlighter. But you're going to see what you like. And we'll, at the next board meeting, we'll discuss this again. And go from it, come up with a good policy. Like a good right. And I'll check to make sure the restrooms are open for the residents' use. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's a no brainer. I mean, you're over there and you need to use the restroom. But I do not want the home care workers to have access. Mm -hmm. They don't belong in the community room without the resident with them. Mm -hmm. It's not their home. Okay. And we're not to provide entertainment. While they're doing laundry, they could be doing other things for the resident. Mm -hmm. Instead of sitting there watching the wash, yeah. do you know what I mean? And that's what happens. They're on the best use of their time. Absolutely not. And the residents are paying for the use of their time. And there's been complaints about mm -hmm. that, too. Okay, are we all set with this discussion now? Anybody else? And it's got to be on the agenda at the next meeting. And we should yes. be able to come up with a good policy then. And all you have to do is throw out the ideas, and we'll type it up, and then we can vote. Okay? And then we'll address the laundry room. We'll try to get information on other people's laundry room use, too. And then we can address that policy. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. The next thing on the agenda is discussion and vote to approve the minutes of 5-11-2023 and 5-15-2023. Now, 
you won't be able to vote right. because you're not here. You were not here. Nope. <coughs> yeah, I have a motion. You will vote. I share the motion to approve to approve the minutes of five eleven twenty three and five fifteen. Do I have a second? I now turn the second that vote to approve the minutes of five eleven and five fifteen twenty three. I have a briefs. Go to approve the minutes of 511, 22, and 515. Any discussion? All in favor? We just did that. Aye. Aye. Executive director's report. Okay, as of right now, the um, AC main heat pump things are being cleaned, professionally cleaned at Stoneville. The reports that we're getting is the company that we're using is doing an excellent job, and they're, they're young, but they're, they're very, very personable. They're taking the whole thing apart, cleaning it, putting it all back together. So from what we're hearing, that's going to work well. So once we get through Stoneville, then we can look at scheduling the same thing to happen at Pakachon Village. But it sounds like we have the right company in place dealing with our residents, and our, our systems will be cleaned properly. Okay. We have vacancies. We have two apartments that are now ready at Stoneville that are going to be housed by veterans. One's coming in tomorrow okay. to see the apartment. And then the other one will be right after that. So that will take care of our two vacancies out here. More. We'll go from the Apaka chart. The vacancy up there, the second floor, is in the process of being turned over. So that's not ready to rent yet. But that'll go to a non-elderly disabled person off the champ list. Okay? And that'll give us our placement rate will be where we're supposed to be with this person. Okay? The only thing we have to do from now on is check the birth dates of the people that we're placing to make sure they are disabled, not elderly, and not elderly. Or maybe even close. But we're going to go by what Champ gives us for a list. And we're in the process of addressing the Champ list. The federal list is easier because we do that in house, whereas the Champ list is the statewide list. But we're going to get it so that we can print it out and that you'll all have access to it. So you can see where we're placing these people on the list. Not who, just what? Removing any identifying information. Right. And strictly okay. elderly disabled veteran, the day they applied, and where they are on the list. You broke that down. I got this. Thank you. But it's a matter of figuring out how to do it and take all those things out. But we're in the process of working on that. We've started the recertification process at Stoneville. And I have until the middle of July to get those rents done. They have to have two weeks notice because it goes into effect August 1st. Okay, so they have to have it in by the end of June that we're always waiting for the stuff to come in. We'll get it done by the middle of July with what we have, and then going forward from there, we have to send the letter. Oh, by the way, we need this. So that's that. And I can't think of anything else right now. Yeah, that's everything. The only thing that I, I was thinking of is to to make sure. When information is sent to you, 
uh, I notice on the bottom of, of most things, it says for in, in, in the office use. So these things you don't show to people outside of this mm -hmm. right, body. body. And, um, and it's not open for discussion at all with anybody else until we have gone through everything that we're supposed to be doing and that it's completed. And then if they have more information, they can call and get information from the office. And then the other thing is, if somebody actually complains to you about something, you can write the complaint down, make sure Roberta gets it as the chairman of the board, mm -hmm. and then she lets me know, and if it's something that the office handles, then the office will handle it. If it's something that the board needs to address, then we go through Roberta, put it on the agenda, and then the full board addresses the issue. Because okay. if it involves a policy that needs to be reviewed, mm -hmm. then that's how we'll go about it. Put it in writing, you received a complaint from so-and-so, goes to Roberta. If it goes to me, or if it goes to you, then we'll deal with it appropriate. Okay? The other, the other thing that I think about that too is if somebody calls you and asks you to write a, 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 a recommendation to them, you can't do that because we are on the board. Okay. And so that would be a conflict of interest for us that goes through the office. Mm -hmm. And then you have somebody outside of this committee making a recommendation. What kind of recommendation is well, if they just recommend, you know, say this person needs needs a place, and um, okay. you know, you're talking about somebody calling you and see if there's any see if ways you can get the way you're getting in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, you don't get involved. Maybe we need to Well, we could. It's part of the recommendations, no? Yeah. You know, it's just a, an ordinary thing that you you just don't do. You I don't know. I, 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 everybody asked me, I said, I, I can't recommend do you can go to the office and apply. But I can't do anything like that because I've been there before. Does everybody understand what she's saying? You can't help them again. There's a process that has to be followed. By law, there's a process. Yeah. It's kind of of interest is what it is. Another question. Has the board so that we can notify them of the vacancy on our board? Yes. Yes. And when did that happen? You know? When did it happen? Last week? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I got the day after the meeting, or the day of the meeting. The day of the, the, day of the last meeting. The day of the last meeting. Yep. Something like that. That's all. We did know whether it's appropriate within the appropriate amount of time. That's all we know. Yes. Yeah. 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 We can get you a copy of it if you want. Yeah, that would have been right there. put it in the package. Yeah. Um, and then never our hands. Are we good? Are we, well, the only other thing is that I, I, I want to go back to how do we know if there was no letter of interest, if you guys had a discussion about Wayne Page, and how did you know when did you know? I want it on the record about a discussion about Wayne on the board member seat. How did you know to, um, to, to um, see if there was no letter of interest, how did you know to make a motion for the vacancy? Because I, it was a bit long. And there was no discussion. Yes. Okay. It just exhausted. Okay. Okay. Let's see. You mean he was allowed to go on because he was going to see the house? It was experiment. And it's only a one year appointment. Right. We didn't see the Mm -hmm. um, any uh, 
other number of items. Anybody else want to use your notes? And then again, public comment. Um, Any public comment? Wayne Page. <coughs> Hello, my name is Wayne Page, 90 Old Common Road. I'm a concerned citizen of Auburn, and I'm here today um, to say um, that the meeting after the first meeting after the election was appalling. It did nothing but crucify board members, the director. There was false statements made by certain members. And the thing is, is they were attacking board members. And it even caused a poor girl to quit because she was so disturbed and distraught over what happened. And it's just wrong. You can have a meeting, you can discuss what's going on, but if that meeting wasn't set up, then there's never been a set up meeting. Believe me, there's no doubt that that was set up. These people have not been coming to any board members' meetings in many, many, many years. But all of a sudden, right after an election, you get a new member, and they're all here. They have plenty of time to come here at any given day that there's a meeting and discuss their issues. I know a couple of them that have came and discussed issues before that were taken care of. But nobody had mentioned that. All they were saying, there was one specific lady, you know, some of them did have legit um, complaints. It was just done at the wrong time and it just looked to me like a setup. And you can't have that. And the thing is, like I was saying, there was one lady specifically, now I'm not gonna use names because I don't do that. That's another thing that's disgusting, that they went ahead and were using people's names. But this one lady, through her whole spiel, lied through the whole thing. She made comments that weren't true she criticized people on this board, criticized a, a girl that has been working with this um, board for a few years. She's been very dedicated. She always had good questions. And she was out to help anybody like the rest of the board does. You people did not deserve what you got from that meeting. And the thing, hopefully it won't ever happen again, but I suppose when you're in the position you're in, or anybody, that things like this happen. But a lot of times you come out with the, the facts of the thing. You don't call people liars. One person was called a liar it is a very nice lady. And then she was called a liar for getting something signed. That thing she was getting signed was for my papers to run. So, I mean, get your facts straight. If you want to come here, more power to you. Come on down. But don't wait for a set-up time or a set-up meeting to do it. You've had all these years to come here and express it. You never did. Never did. Very seldom did we ever see any citizens come to meeting. But like I said, after that election, all of a sudden, here they are. And it was a disgrace what they did to you guys as a board. All of you. And... That's all I got to say, and other than thanks for nominating me for being on the board again. Thank you. And, you know, you got to work together. You, you can't do what happened at that meeting. There should never be another meeting like that. 
or taken out on people on the board. You know, I'm very sad about the way that happened. I'm not mad, I'm sad that something like that can occur to people that are working their hearts out to help out people in housing and to get what you people got. Even I'll apologize for it. For it. I wasn't there. I had nothing to do with it. And hopefully you keep up the good work. And hopefully you can work together and make this place great for the people that live here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? Being none, we need a motion, we'll call a motion to adjourn. Right, Sharon, to obtain a motion to adjourn. Excuse me. Second, 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 Thank you very much.